All right, guys, a lot of you have been asking for it, so here we go. We're going to break down the massive, powerful driver swing of the World Long Drive champion, Kyle Berkshire, who within the last couple of months actually hit the longest drive on record. It's a new world record, 579 yards. Granted, it was a little downwind. When I say a little, I mean a lot, but the longest recorded drive ever in the history of golf, 579 yards. So let's break down this driver swing. Let's see ex if we can tell exactly what he does and how he gets so much power. So if you've seen my videos before, you'll see that, again, I've got my plane line, which is down the shaft of the driver and through Kyle's midsection here, and then I've got a circle drawn around his head. Starting with the back swing. You can see that circle around his head. He kind of moves back right at the beginning. Brings it back a little inside. Very long back swing. You can see here the club head is a little bit outside of his hands. Club face is in a good position. Lots of bend in those knees. This is where it gets really interesting. You can see uh, as he gets to this, his arm being parallel to the ground here. His club is actually way back here. A lot of players will already have this club way up here. He is creating as much length as he can in that backswing to get as much power as he can. So moving forward, keeping that left arm extremely straight. And then I want you to notice something right here. Uh, hands very high and very deep, but his head has started to move towards the golf ball and i'm going to show you why here in a second he actually does this to compensate for what happens later in the swing so again at this point he's he's got his hands very high very deep all the way back on his rear end there and then but that's not the back the end of the back swing he continues around look at that shoulder turn just when you think he's done a little bit more club face is in a great position, club itself, the shaft is way across the line here. You can see pointed there. A lot of pro golfers will keep this kind of pointed down towards the target, towards the fairway. But again, as you can see here, he gets a ton of shoulder turn. Hips are turned basically completely towards the back of the tee box here. Back is to the target. Again, you can see his head has moved a little bit towards the golf ball. Now, moving into the downswing, he squats. You can see a lot of squat, head drops pretty significantly. And the first thing that happens is those hips kind of start to rotate. And then... Fires those hips. See that starts to drop the club down into the slot. You can see this club is actually in a great position right through his bicep and his upper arm area there. Again, you can see his head has dropped pretty significantly. You can see he definitely thrusts those hips forward and then to the target. Now, remember his head was a little bit towards the golf ball, and then at this point it starts to pull away from the golf ball. But at impact... It's basically exactly where it was at his address position. And then one thing that Kyle Berkshire is kind of known for here is his follow through and his massive recoil. But watch that left foot and left leg as he comes through this, completely slides backwards, clears those hips through, finishes low and left, and then watch this recoil as he finishes completely around his body, Whips the club back again. Massive recoil. Huge drive. Let's move on to the face-on view. I'd really appreciate it if you would drop a like on the video and hit that subscribe. Really helps me out a lot. All right, so on this face-on view, there's a couple things I want you to notice right off the bat. First of all, I want you to notice how wide his stance is. Very wide stance, okay? Okay. And that's because of how hard he's swinging. He needs a good, solid base. The next thing I want you to notice is he actually tees this up 
relatively back in his stance, okay? A lot of pros, again, will kind of be up here off this left heel. He's got that a good couple inches, four inches or so back towards the middle of his stance. Uh, and that's so he can get kind of driving through the golf ball. Next thing I want you to notice is how high he tees it up, okay? He is basically teeing that up on like a tee ball, baseball tee. He's got that thing literally six inches in the air. And that's so he can basically, you know, hit way up on the golf ball, get as much launch as possible, reduce the spin, get it out there as far as he can. And one last thing I want you to notice uh, at this setup position that is a little uh, different than most, uh, again, pro golfers, ones that will be on tour, is he has a very strong grip. All right, I'm going to remove that circle so you can see it a little better. But his left hand, his gloved hand, is turned way over kind of this way on the club. And same thing with his right hand, again, over on this side of the club more both of those being strong like that is going to help him rotate those hands through impact this way and turn closing down that club face. When you swing that fast and you get that much whip through the ball with the golf shaft, the driver shaft, that club wants to stay open. So he's got a very strong grip to kind of counteract that. And then, of course, uh, like all golfers here, he's got his head behind the golf ball at a dress uh, like you're supposed to be. Angle of his shoulders definitely pointed up. Again, he wants to hit up on the golf ball, get as much launch and reduce as much spin as he can. So now that we've gone through his setup alone, let's get into uh, his swing from this view here. We've got his patented little teeter-totter thing where he shifts all of his weight onto this front leg. You can see... All the weight has been shifted here. It's all into this front leg. That back foot is basically off the ground. And then he will shift back again. And now as he starts to take the club back, you can see he has shifted all that weight again back into this leg as he starts his backswing. Now continuing on the backswing, you can see he gets way behind the golf ball. And then look at this shoulder turn. It's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, the dude's shoulders are pointed over here, complete back to the target. Again, this front leg is just, there's zero weight on that front leg. All the weight is right here on this back leg. Again, his backswing is just so big. He can probably see this driver head out of the peripheral vision of his left eye. Definitely, definitely have to be extremely strong and extremely flexible to get to that position. Now, his first move, again, is going to be that little squat where he hits those hips towards the target, but he's also hitting them kind of down as he starts into the golf ball. He slams that front foot down, and then right here is where most golfers will be at the top of their backswing, but he's already halfway through his backswing as he gets through the golf ball, you can see he gets to a spot where his head stops and then this front leg will start to completely straighten here as he gets down into close to the impact position. Again, back foot way up on the toe, head extremely back behind the golf ball. This front foot is basically airborne at this point. He is trying to just smash this thing. He clears that left foot out. He gets that driver to where it's whipping right at impact. You can see here that the driver shaft is right here. And then as he makes impact, the next slide here, you can see it start to it's whipping up because it, he whipped it to where it just right at impact had the amount perfect amount of lag. I mean, look at this shoulder angle at impact. He's basically way back here. Just insane. Look, even more just hitting miles up on the ball. Keeping that head back so he can just absolutely smash it. Again, this front foot. Airborne, and then at impact, he slides it way backwards to clear those hips. 
as hard as he swings, if he didn't do that, he would probably tear something in his knee. And then again, with this patented little recoil, if you'll look at the shaft right here, again, it's basically whipped right around his body here. And then again, the recoil here as he brings it back. You could see, I mean, the amount of whip he has on that shaft, a lot of pro long drive guys will actually use just a stiff shaft or even a regular flex shaft. I know that sounds crazy, but the more whip they can get in that shaft, the more ball speed they can get and therefore the more distance they can get. So Bryson DeChambeau, when he was going through the long drive stuff, he came out and said that he actually uses a regular flex 48 inch driver shaft when he does his long drive stuff. Uh, those guys use a little bit longer shafts. A typical shaft on a driver right now is about 45 to 45 and a half inches. The long drive guys use 48 inch drivers. Another thing those guys use is they will actually use custom heads where typically the lowest degree head you can buy is around a seven or an eight. Those guys hit six, four and a half even. Um, and that way, again, they're hitting just miles up on it, which is giving them that dynamic loft, which is having it shoot straight up in the air, but it's also reducing the spin. And the more these drivers are getting lower and lower spin, the farther this golf ball is going to go. So these guys are loving it. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like for me. Consider hitting that subscribe. I post all sorts of golf content. I really think you'd enjoy my stuff. I appreciate you hanging out. Have a good one.